As we read the gospel records, we read eyewitness accounts of the life and ministry of the Lord Jesus. In a sense, the gospels are just the beginning of Christ's work. The adventure continues in the book of Acts. In this study with Scott Pauley, we consider the continuing work of Christ through the Holy Spirit, who works through the apostles and the New Testament church. Now, let's get in on the adventure. Have you ever started a project that you failed to finish? Uh, this, if you're listening to this, husbands with your wives may be the source of real contention today. Uh, maybe she has an alphabetized list for you, but the truth is all of us have started something. We just didn't quite finish it. We just didn't quite get it done. I want you to know God never does that. The Lord always finishes what he starts. Uh, we are beginning our new study in the book of Acts, one that I'm so tremendously excited about. And here's the way it begins, Acts 1, verse 1. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. But you'll notice there's not a period at the end of that statement. It goes on. Until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And yet still there's no period. This is one long sentence. Listen to verse 4. And, aren't you glad for the conjunction? And, being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. What was he saying? I'm not done, fellows. The best is yet to come. There's more on the way. Of course, it was a reference to the coming of the person of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And we're coming to that shortly. We'll study that. But I don't want you to miss the most basic truth that is revealed here because it's powerful. You know, there's a lot of profound theology wrapped up in simple statements. I, I say to you that this phrase, Jesus began, is a reminder that the one who starts always finishes. I alluded to this verse in our last study, but Hebrews 12 verse 2 says that our Lord Jesus Christ is both the author and the finisher of our faith. Now look, he, he didn't just set it all in motion and then leave us to ourselves. Aren't you glad you're not on your own today? No, he still holds the pen in hand. He's still writing your story. In other words, uh, the, the same Christ who is writing the story in Matthew and Mark and Luke and John is writing the story in the book of Acts. The same Holy Spirit uh, who has been pinning the previous chapters for us is now pinning this chapter for us because the adventure continues. God always finishes what he starts. Now, he was going to continue his work in that early church. He was going to continue his work in the centuries that followed, and he is continuing his work right now, and he will continue that work until the day we see the Lord Jesus Christ face to face. In fact, let me give you a couple of great verses that will help uh, to connect in your thinking. One is Philippians chapter 1 and verse number 6. Here's what Paul said, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun, there's that word, he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. In other words, you can be very sure that the same one who got it started is still doing the work. As a boy, I remember singing the little chorus, he's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. That's the application of this truth, you see. Uh, the Lord didn't just save you. Oh, he did save you, but the Lord who saved you came to live in you, and he's working in you now. The Lord didn't just found the church and get it started. No, the Lord is with the church to the ends of the earth. Uh, the Lord didn't just begin something in your family. The Lord will continue that in your family because he's the complete Christ, and all of his works are complete works. Here's another great verse. Uh, listen to 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 12. Paul wrote to Timothy. This is his last letter, by the way. And he says, For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. In other words, I just believe that everything God started in me and everything that I have given to him, the Lord is going to make full work of it. The Lord's going to make a, a finished product out of it, and when is he going to do it? He answers that question in both of these verses, Philippians 1.6 and 2 Timothy 1.12, on the day we see Jesus Christ face to face. 
So the Lord is not finished. Uh, perhaps you're discouraged today, maybe even despondent about your, your life, your family, some circumstance, something you're dealing with, what's going on in our world. Listen, friends, uh, we're not at the, the last page yet. We're not at the end of the chapter yet. We may be near the end, but I promise you God is going to finish what he started. Uh, Solomon said that God makes all things beautiful in his time. And when Acts 1 opens, the disciples are, are dealing with heartache and heartbreak. Jesus is leaving them. And when they gather in the upper room, there must have been a lot of tears and a lot of emotion. But friends, that's not the end of the story. Our Lord Jesus is going to finish what he started. To prove it to you, let me take you to the other end of the book of Acts uh, in closing our study today. We've been in Acts 1. I'm sure some of you are wondering if I'm ever going to leave verse 1. And no, we're not going to spend this much time on every verse of the book of Acts. But it's an interesting verse and an important verse. But go with me from Acts chapter 1, verse number 1, to Acts chapter 28 and verse number 31. Because this is the last verse of this book. And here's how it ends. Preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. Does that not seem like an odd way to end the book? I mean, a book as large as the book of Acts, 28 chapters long, a book as substantive as this story of the early church, when you get to Acts 28, the context is the Apostle Paul and his ministry near the end of his life, and all we know is this, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. There's no in Jesus' name, there's no amen, there's no salutation, there's no signing off. Why is it? Because, dear ones, the story goes on. I would say to you, there's no more scripture being written, but there are records being written in heaven. God keeps very good records in his books. And the story of the church is continuing at this hour. The story of what the Lord Jesus is doing in his saints in the New Testament age, that story is still being written. It will not be fully known and fully read until we gather at the nail-pierced feet of Jesus at the judgment seat of Christ. And so if that is true, then you ought to live every day with all confidence. That's the words of the last verse of the book of Acts, with all confidence. Keep preaching God's kingdom. Keep teaching the things that concern the Lord Jesus Christ. I love this too. No man forbidding him. Aren't you glad? No man can stop what God started. No man. No man on earth, no matter how wicked, how vile, how powerful, how blasphemous, no man on earth can halt the purpose of God and thwart the plan of God for his own glory and honor. No man forbidding him. No, my friends, God's work and God's word goes on and on and on. Aren't you glad to be a part of it? I don't know about you. I'm excited. I really am. I'm thrilled to think I'm a part of this adventure. I'm a part of the story, the same story that the apostles were in, the same story that Peter and John knew, the same story that Paul was a part of. I'm a part of that great adventure, the adventure of faith and following Jesus Christ. And it should be lived every day in the words of the book of Acts with all confidence. Now, would you today just reaffirm in your own heart that you belong to Jesus and he belongs to you? And if that is true, he's got you in the palm of his hand. He's got the situation fully under control. He knows exactly what he's doing. And I tell you on the authority of the word of God that the same Jesus that began it will finish it. Why? Because our God, the complete one, always finishes what he starts. The adventure continues. The same is true today as it was then. The Lord is at work in this world through his Holy Spirit, drawing people to himself. What a privilege as God's children to be a part of what God is doing in this world today. If you'll visit enjoyingthejourney.org, you will find many resources that will equip you as you walk with the Lord. You will find previous podcast series and episodes, full-length Bible messages, and a topical search engine that will aid you in studying Bible subjects. If this podcast is a blessing to you, we hope you will share it with a friend. Be sure to join us on the next episode of this continuing adventure through the book of Acts. Acts.